A warm welcome from India to everyone. We are absolutely thrilled to have all our speakers and presenters, all of all of you present here for the conference, Pandemic, Humanity and Education. COVID-19 presented unpredictable situations to social workers to quickly adapt to health, social and economic crisis. It exposed the gap between national pandemic preparedness and the role of social workers in emergency. The recent development in the field of science, humanities and education have had a huge impact on our lives, particularly education. All of a sudden, it was moved to an online platform from the classroom structure within weeks. Physical movement, internship and projects were postponed. This rapid shift in education created technical and psychosocial complexities, which affected students, teachers, and researchers across the globe. This three-day virtual international conference provides the platform for experts and researchers in the field of education, science, and humanities to exchange and discuss policies and practices of dealing with the global pandemic caused by COVID-19. This conference explores the long-term effect of pandemic on education, literature, psychosocial, and economic life. This conference has been organized by Cape Comoran Trust India and Lavender Literary Club. Cape Comoran Trust was formed with the aim of education and charity. The founding president is Dr. R. S. Regin Silvestre, for people across the globe, the Cape Comoran Trust symbolizes humanitarianism and signifies a new force of environmental integrity. The primary objective of the trust is to promote charity and a new learning environment among people all around the globe through services, uh, educational institutions, conferences, and publications. The service of the organization will be available to all the people irrespective of caste, creed, of religion and sex. Cape Comoran Club is a feeder organization of Cape Comoran Trust. The purpose of this feeder organization is to organize programs to promote academic activities throughout the world. Lavender Literary Club is an association for students, scholars, academicians, scientists, and writers to discuss human evolution, civilization, language, literature, environment, culture, politics, law, religion, philosophies, social justice, criticism, psychology, and science to create new, a new attitude in the modern social and modern academic discourse. Over the years, Lavender has grown to include various activities and it continues to evolve along with new membership. Um, this is happening in collaboration with the Department of English, School of Languages and Literature, Sikkim University, India, the Department of English, Perrier University, PG Extension Center, Tamil Nadu, India, and White Memorial College of Arts and Science for Women, Kerala, India, in association with Cape Comoran Publishers. I would now like to welcome, um, welcome Dr. Rosie Chamling, Associate Professor and Head, Department of English, School of Languages and Literature, Sikkim University, Sikkim, India, to please deliver the welcome address. Uh, thank you, Manisha. Good morning, everyone present. Uh, I, on behalf of the organizing committee from Cape Comoran Trust, Lavender Literary Club, in collaboration with the Department of English, Sikkim University, Gantok, in collaboration also with the Department of English, Periyar University, Tamil Nadu, and in collaboration with White Memorial College of Arts and Science for Women, Kerala, India, I welcome you all to the three-day international virtual conference on pandemic, humanity, and education. I also take this opportunity to welcome our keynote speaker of the day today, Dr. Alexis Arizabal Enriquez from Abra State Institute of Sciences and Technology, Philippines. Welcome, ma'am. 
I also welcome all the plenary speakers for this three-day event and all the participants. Without the participants, we cannot actually have the conference. So I welcome all the participants as well. Uh, without much ado, uh, I would uh, once again, I hope the three-day international conference will be a fruitful confluence of the exchange of ideas on pandemic humanity and education. Thank you so much. Manisha, over to you. Thank you, ma'am. I would now like to invite Dr. Shubhra Jamwal uh, for the inaugural address. She's presently uh, working as an assistant professor in Government College of Education, Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir, India. She has a working experience of almost 10 years and has participated in numerous national and international conferences. She has published extensively on various topics, national and international journals and anthologies. She has organized one national and is very creative in her field. She's also appointed as a member in referee board for an online international interdisciplinary UGC uh, approved research journal. She's also an associate editor for the Fountain Pen Journal of English by Government of Jammu and Kashmir Higher Education Department. She's also a part of the editorial team GAP, Grand Academic, Academic Portal. She has edited two books and organized conferences. She has published a dozen of research articles in uh, various reputed journals. Besides teaching UG and PG classes of English, she is the counselor of IGNU. She has been training students for personal personality de development and English speaking in the Department of Lifelong Learning Center. University of Jammu. She is a versatile personality and has been awarded uh, with the President and Vice President Award for Social Service by Bharat Scouts and Guides. I welcome you. Thank you so much, Manisha, for those uh, nice words. <laughs> I am not that uh, well versed with all these things. Anyways, uh, a very good morning to all. I start uh, this conference with a quote. You learn more from losing than winning. You leap how to keep going. The COVID-19 pandemic is considered as a most crucial global health calamity of the century and the greatest challenge that the humankind faced since Second World War. In December 2019, a new infectious respiratory disease emerged in Wuhan, China, and was named by the World Health Organization as COVID-19, Coronavirus Disease 2019. Till now, there are no reports of any clinically approved antiviral drugs or vaccines that are effective against COVID-19. It has been recently spread around the world, posing enormous uh, health issues, economic, environmental, and social challenges to the entire human population. The coronavirus outbreak is severely disrupting the global economy. COVID-19 is bringing out numerous new challenges in every possible domain. Higher education just being one of that. The rapidly evolving situation due to the pandemic has posed a shift in teaching learning process from this offline to online. New technology enabled teaching is definitely in the cards and we are just dealing with it. We are looking forward, but the question arises here that mm. is it be easy to make this transition in total? What role can a different stakeholder play to ensure a smooth transition? COVID-19 presented an unpredictable situation to the social workers just quickly adapting, just, just as Manisha just rightly said, that they have been adapting to the health, social and economical crisis. It exposed a gap between the nation and the pandemic preparedness and the role of the social workers in emergency. So we are here today 
discussing in this three day long international conferences which is giving us a wonderful platform to share our experiences and researches in the field of education science and humanity we will all exchange and discuss the policies and practices across the globe as we are connected together and uh, the recent developments which are in the field of humanities and education have what impact they have on our lives with these words uh, i welcome you all to this conference and uh, this conference explores the long term effect of pandemic on education social uh, psychosocial uh, environment and economic life now let's ponder together on this topic and i declare this international conference open and wish all the best to the organizers thank you uh uh thank you ma'am i would now uh like to just a second okay i would now like to um invite our keynote speaker dr alexis uh arizabal enriquez i hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly ma'am Uh, is an associate professor at the Abra State Institute of Sciences and Technology, uh, Bangued um, campus. She finished her Master of Arts, <coughs> excuse me, in teaching English and uh, Doctor of Education in the University of Northern Philippines, Vigan City. While her baccalaureate ba baccalaureate uh, degree, degree AB uh, English at the University of the East. Rector Manila. Her various designations include Technical Paper Advisor of the Technocrat, Director of Information and Publication, Dean of the College of uh, Teacher Education. Awarded as Faculty Researcher in 2019, her skills and passion to explore in research paved her way to local, national, regional, and international presentations, and wide best present. in several international research conferences most of her researches have been published in international refereed and peer reviewed journals and scopus indexed international journals she is also a reviewer of several international journals served as judge in international research presentations and appointed as vice president for external affairs of ISTAR uh, international society of teachers administrators and researchers Recently, she was awarded as a uh, most outstanding research advocate by Asia Pacific Awards Council on July 2020. With a stance as an AACCUP accreditor, she has accredited several universities and colleges in the Philippines. Um, as an ASO 9001-2015 internal auditor or overall coordinator of a school. She has earned supported her school in various quality assurance endeavors and yielded the same sense in her delivery of quality education to her valued students. I'm delighted to welcome you ma'am. Um over to you. Okay. Yes. Um good afternoon everyone. It's nice to be in India right now. So namaste. I don't know if that's the proper term I would give be giving you for hello okay but in the Philippines it's already 1 um pm here so good afternoon to everyone I am Dr Alexis A Enriquez from the Abra State Institute of uh, Sciences and Technology actually just to give you a very brief background of uh, the school where I come from it's um one of the provinces of a region Cordillera administrative region in the northern north northern part of the Philippines. Philippines has three islands so I belong to Luzon. All right so we have Visayas and Mindanao. My province is located at the northern part of the island Luzon of the Philippines. So thank you so much for inviting me here. I would like to thank of course um a doctor regine all right uh cape comorin trust india 
of course, in collaboration with the Department of English, School of Languages and Literature, uh, Sikkim University, India, Department of English, Periyar University, Tamil Nadu, India, and White Memorial College of Arts and Sciences of so Women, Kerala, India. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Let me share with you uh, what I prepared for this afternoon. Do you see my screen? Do you see my screen, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. So, all right. Uh, the theme of um, today's conference is pandemic, all right, um, humanity and education. I chose this topic, virtual scenario of online education and resilience of academic frontliners amidst the pandemic. Actually, if you would try to take a look at the, uh, at the um, how do you call this, at the abstract which was submitted to the, to the staff, um, I have there the virtual realities, but then I, I was thinking that you may expect something spectacular if I would be using the term virtual reality. So you might be, um, you might be, how do you call this? You might be um, uh, supposing that I will be coming up with, uh, you know, virtual reality, the simulation games and all that. So I changed the topic, although this is the epitome of my theme today, of my topic today, the virtual scenario of online education and resilience of academic frontliners amidst the pandemic. Just to give you a brief background, although our, uh, our uh, previous speaker had already given us so much of what the pandemic has given us, let me share with you a, um, all right, a, 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 a uh, bird's eye view of the pandemic so the pandemic has given us has affected us closures and that millions of students and teachers were affected and that staff and teachers as well had undergone employment unemployment mm -hmm. and every start of 2020 has also coined or came up with a what you call term, a phrase which he called a fog of war. Since we are now in the face of the calamity, wherein unemployment is really barking us on a high level. The crisis has deprived children also and the youth of opportunities for their respective development and improvement, according to our visas. Further, COVID-19, has given us, especially with the administrators, to be into a what you call planning on major decisions wherein vulnerable and disadvantaged students must have equal access to educational opportunities. We know so well that um, there are really some students, disadvantaged students, who have fewer or few access to educational opportunities. We would try to discuss that later on. I will be giving you a real scenario of what will, what am I talking about. And students also with learning difficulties. This must also be the, what you call, um, content of some major decisions, especially in schools. Also, the COVID-19 has really, uh, delivered us or given us a burden of catching up after a period of prolonged inactivity and this activity prolonged activity wherein students are just confined inside their houses this may precipitate a dropping out of students from school and especially with some problems and challenges which will be discussed later on dropping would already be a choice for our students. So because of this, teachers must really be indulged or engage themselves into training, wherein this must be a menu of alternative learning methods that includes, of course, online learning, offline methods, such as take-home readings and activities, and a lot more. And of course, teachers must really have 
to indulge into innovative teaching, wherein this must be a major consideration that would require schools to readjust their budget allocation in order to respond to this emerging need. While it's true that um, budget or funds is really very, very important amidst COVID-19, the focus for me and my own opinion, the focus must really be on us, teachers, their respective academic frontliners, okay? So what is this learning innovation that we need to engage in? According to Joshua Kim and Edward Maloney, this is a quiet revolution across colleges and universities. This innovation must really allow, all right, a rethink on how students must learn both inside and outside the classroom. Technology is changing, and not only what should be taught, but how best such technology to be used in teaching and learning process. And also, learning innovation is a mode from active learning and inclusive pedagogy to online education, leveraging fundamental strengths while challenging long-standing assumptions about how teaching and learning happen. Okay, now, since we have now this COVID-19, all right, everything is already digitized. We, we don't have any option but have to uh, abreast ourselves as teachers, we need really have to in, be in love to technology. So I was able to research on tools for teachers and students themselves, okay? So we have here the Storybird, the Animoto, the CK12, the TED Ed, Night VR, Edmodo, Class Duho. What else? We have the Palm Peak, the Kahoot, CISO, we also have Prezi, Adobe's SP Tutorial, Scratch, The Project, okay? Can Academy, we have the Hot Shop, we have the Google Classroom, we have the TeachM, we have the self card we have the Quizlet, and many others. I'm sure some of you have more than, than what I presented. These are just some of the tools which I myself had researched. But to mention, all right, um, I am honest that of all these tools which I was able to research, I was only able to use this Google Classroom. And I will try to tell to you why Google Classroom was only used for my tertiary students, not only from my tertiary students, but also from my masteral students, only the Google Classroom, okay? I'm sure some of you out there have um, other tools aside from this. There are uh, numerous and there are many other um, web tools that all of you know, I'm sure of that. Okay, as a researcher, um, I was able to conduct in school, in the school where I came from, um, as an associate professor, we are really mandated to do researches. And I came up with uh, this research pertaining to COVID-19, the thoughts, ideas, and experiences of three groups of uh, um, respondents, my co-teachers, some of my students, my friends in the FB, and some of the parents, of course, also my FB friends who are parents of our students. These are three sets of uh, respondents and I gave such questions, different questions, although the questions were um, 10 each pertaining to COVID-19, okay? So I would like to share with you what were their thoughts prior the onset of the opening of classes? Okay, I would like to share with you some of the thematized responses in as far as thoughts, experiences of teachers. They were focused on empowerment. Why empowerment? Prior the onset of the, the opening of our 
um, of our classes here. Uh, we opened our classes um, last August. Actually, my school was the very first school in the province that opened. Okay. Teachers would like to have empowerment. Empowerment, why empowerment? We need to design our own modules. We need to decide our own instructional materials because primarily we know our students. We know their needs and because we know their needs, we know how to design the modules and other instructional materials that will be delivered to them, okay? And vis-a-vis, -vis, of course, with the curriculum that is offered by our own department. Another is elusiveness. They didn't know what to do. I myself didn't know what to do. If classes will be open, should I go? Should I not? Should I file my leave? Should I not go? And there are many questions unclear prior the opening of classes. Of course, the very first, first and foremost, we were all focused on our own security and our own safety. Will the school provide us the health protocols that we need? Maximum for that? Another negation. It's a total no, wherein the school will, some of the teachers answered no for a safety inside the school. Okay. Another also with the trustworthiness to officials. Of course, we are teachers, and amidst this challenge, amidst the COVID-19, our safety is really laid down to our respective officials, okay? Time management in as far as the modules, activities, and other preparations prior the opening of classes. Readiness. Are they ready psychologically, emotionally, physically, and everything? All right, and some of them answered no, some of them answered yes. A degree of hopefulness, where in all of them, that includes myself, we were so hopeful that everything will turn out fine. And flexibility. Well, teachers need to be flexible amidst any challenge, amidst any crisis, amidst any pandemic. So these were the group of uh, teachers, they were 16, who were interviewed via the, the, the messenger, a call, and of course, some Google forms. Okay, let's go to our students. There were three, there, it was, responses were thematized into three. Some of them are anxious, if not most of them are anxious, okay? And hopeful and also optimistic. Who wouldn't want that everything will turn out to be normal again? All of our students would love the face-to-face, -face, just like the normal scenario of their classroom set up, okay? The third, of course, our parents, all right? Number one concern is connectivity. Just to give you a brief background, our province comprises 27 municipalities, and some of these municip municipalities are far-flung areas, and connectivity will really be a perennial problem. We know that prior to the opening of classes, we know already that connectivity will really be a problem, and it will really be. I will show you the real scenario later on. Of course, the child's adjustment also. How will their children adjust at home? Since during the pandemic, we will already be bringing the classroom in their own homes. So how, the Parents would really be concerned on how their children be adjusted at home, all right? Another would be, of course, the schedule of online classes, since online classes are going also with their own connectivity. Parental participation. Well, um, just to give you a brief background, 90%, if not uh, 80 to 90%, parents have their respective jobs, okay? Some of them are selling in the market. Some of them are so busy with, with, with some of their work. So one of the concern would be how would parents participate in their online classes of their respective children and at the same time, 
focusing also on some, all right, on some works, household chores, how else, income of the family, and many other things. So one of the concerns was the parental participation. Of course, who, would, who wouldn't want to have this face-to-face um, -face amidst the crisis? It was really a total no for them that their children would really have to go to, to school and have this face-to-face. -face. Again, safety and uh, security was a primary concern among the parents. And of course, all of them had been skeptical on child safety in school. So these were the three sets that um, were, you know, um, focused on with uh, one of my researches before on COVID-19, the thoughts, experiences of these three groups, okay? It's too important that as a teacher, we need to know the thoughts and experiences of parents, students, and fellow teachers, especially during pandemic, okay? And with the web tools that I presented to you, the tools which are needed to be used by teachers and students, were they really usable? Were they really be utilized later on, on the onset of the opening of classes? How, how usable are they, <laughs> okay? And what are the actual virtual scenarios? Let me give you some of these scenarios on my own context. And probably you may be able to relate with all of this. I'll give you one, okay? We have here a memo from a server. This is a PLDT. This is one of our servers here in the Philippines. And they gave us a memo on a one week manage, management system, all right? Em emergency system maintenance. So that went for a week, September 25 to 30. Another one on this side is by Abreco. This is Abra Electric Cooperative. Actually, there are already um, interruptions, power interruptions, not only weekly, but sometimes every day. With the 27 municipalities here, we are given sporadic this, uh, schedule, sporadic schedule. Though it was, or it is, sporadic schedule still, I know this would really affect all classes that we have, okay? Another, all right. I was able to um, catch this. Uh, he is my co-teacher. Okay, I, I even asked him a permission so I could use his um, photo, all right. There was no signal. He was having a hard time with his signal, okay. This is inside our own school, right. He could hardly catch up with his online class, Google class. And this was taken October 5, 2020. You may be smiling, but look at the caption. This is a group of teachers who needed to go on top of a building, right? You could see there, Santo Nino National High School in Batanga City, showed the media how they tried to send their requirements for learning delivery modalities on their schools. That's in Batanga City. But still, this happened in the Philippines, okay? Another this is how we delivered the modules in one of the, um, in the campus, the other campus, right? So via the Facebook, the chairperson came up with an announcement so that students and the LGU would be able to prepare. So as you could see here, you have here, um, Barangay captains are here, all right? So the school coordinated with the Barangay captains and Le left to them the modules intended for our students who at that time were not able to attend and came 
to get their respective modules. So it is teachers, teachers who went, who go to our students for distribution of modules. We do this, okay? All right, this is one of the posts again of one of our students. I was able to grab this. So you have here, they built a tent just to have the signal. This is on top of a hill, all right? Another, all right. So these are just some of the real um, scenario of our roads here. You could just imagine if uh, we go for delivery of the modules and distribute and then uh, go back and then distribute and go back. I don't know, but this is a real scenario, okay? All right, here they were given actually a, um, a gadget, all right? This is in NCR in the National Capital Region. This was taken October 5, okay, wherein two of the students were given a free gadget. This is in Manila, NCR, okay? So the mayor came up with the funds, okay, and utilized the funds for COVID-19, in response to COVID-19. Also here, school opening in the Philippines, summer student who climbs mountain for online classes, gets a laptop from donors. Okay. <laughs> Another. This is again a classroom that is in Summer Mountain. Okay, there were six students. So this was taken October 2020. And we also have here, there are the teachers who were on top of their house of a school building just to get the signal. So these are new um, photos that happen here in the Philippines, okay? Despite of all these hurdles, which COVID-19 has brought us, we teachers must really be resilient and life goes on. We have to be um, the role model to combat COVID-19 in any way we can. So I would like to present to you how teachers can become resilient, right? How to become a resilient educator. Self-care. We need to take care of our own selves. Take time to help yourself. Then you will be in a better position to help others also. Okay. Another, well, Exercise, okay? It lowers cortisol in your body's stress hormone and releases good chemicals in your body called endorphins, right? Exercise, cut back on the caffeine, but I know I cannot do this, okay? But according to, to Ayub, I was able to get this in the article of Ayub, that caffeine is a stimulant and can make some feel anxious, but we could take caffeine in moderation. Keeping a journal, I love to write. And I know some of us, as English teachers, we really have to write feelings and thoughts. How am I today? What would be my plan tomorrow? Um, I'm, I'm angry to one person. I need to write all my feelings there. Emotionally, writing would process our feelings. It would also improve our cognitive functioning and strengthen immune system. So this is according to IO. 2020. He gives us tips on how to be a resilient ed educator. Moving on, still on a resilient educator. According to I am still, bubble gum relaxes us. Okay. We need to laugh, crack jokes, take someone who would watch with us a funny movie for it relieves stress. Breathe. Deep breathing affects our relaxation. It slows down our heart rate. And of course, it feels us calmer. Hello. Yes. Can I continue? Yes, ma'am. 
Yeah, I I hear some noise. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you so much. Also, we can listen to music for it energizes and calms us also. The impact on others, what we feel, how we behave has an impact on our children and impact on our students. Students take cues and pick up on us, especially with the new normal. Our behaviors towards staying healthy can help our families and students observe, learn, and understand how to take care of themselves as well. Okay, and lastly, through a strong mind and body connection. With a strong immune system, basic hygiene, this will also address our mental health, okay? So with all of this, I would like to end, of course, my presentation with this quote by uh, Winston Churchill. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. With that, thank you so much. Um, that's on my language, meaning thank you so much. All right. I hope that uh, you will be able to get something from this simple sharing that I gave to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, for such an engaging uh, uh, talk. Uh, anyone who has uh, any questions to pose could please. Uh, Yes, um, they are actually, um, we are having our virtual accreditation and I'm given a cue already. I, I told that to Dr. Regin, I'm given a cue that the accreditors are waiting for me for the interview. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Yes, okay. my time, yeah, my time is 1 p.m. with my accreditors. So, all right, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Matmaya and Dr. Andy. Thank you for uh, tagging me along in all this um, academic endeavors that you gave me. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for all these wonderful comments. Yeah, everything everything is thank you, ma'am. Right, thank you so much. Thank you for having me around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.